you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software, $100, and starting pricing for high-end software, $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. Order yours today to experience all the benefits of Ash Kick and Natural Body Butter. With skin so smooth and soft, you'll thank us for it. Shop Ash Kick and online. That's A S H. K I C K I N dot com. Boom, there it is. What's going on, guys? Has some little technical issues, but I'm here. Hold on one second. Just letting everybody know that I'm live right now. What's up, man? How y'all doing, dudes and dudettes? How y'all been, man? Hope you guys had a great week. All right. Just throwing this stuff on the social media. How y'all doing, man? We're chopping it up right now. We are chopping up some good game right now on today's broadcast, as we always do, ladies and gentlemen. Oops, 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 oops. So y'all just bear with me while I get everything together here. Y'all bear with me while we get everything set and straight. And um, waiting on everybody to pile on in the room, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see where you guys are in here. Hold on one second. Getting everything together, watching people pile in the room. Please I need y'all to hit that like button. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. And um, go ahead and hit that HD button to see a player in HD. Also, I need you to share the broadcast. Share this broadcast on your um, Twitter, retweet it, and then repost it on your Facebook page. That would be great. Share this on your Twitter, repost this on your Facebook page while we're getting it together. All right. A lot of things we're going to get into on tonight's broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I hope everybody has their tickets for the FBA Expo going down in Dallas. That's in a couple of weeks from now. We're getting very close to the FBA Expo going down in Dallas. You dig? It's going down in Dallas, ladies and gentlemen, and it's going to be on and popping, ladies and gentlemen. You do not want to miss it. I'm here. What did she say? There's no answer. Okay, I don't know somebody who was critical of you need to invite me. In. Okay, hey, man, look, I, a lot of people are just saying they just do shit for YouTube clout. Yeah, yeah, I don't have to jump at everybody's YouTube channel. Somebody um, asked me today to debate some um, tether about immigration and reparations and all that. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to waste I, a lot of tethers and a lot of um, clout chases just want people to give them clout and not, we don't have time for that. I'm not trying to help somebody build up their damn platform. Damn that. Um, you got to understand that there's a lot of people who try to be contrary just for the sake of contrary. Um, a lot of the arguments are in bad faith. You know, a lot of people just want attention. Yeah, they, they think attention is the fastest way to get a come up. Um, there was a story, speaking of attention, of this dude and his chick. Let me post that real quick. They got a like an Instagram, TikTok channel, and they went in a store. Hold on one second. Let me, let me look this up. They went in the store doing that old licking the ice cream gag. Hold on. Remember a few years ago, there was a, a disgusting-ass YouTube um, social media thing where people 
go in and, and lick ice cream and then put the ice cream back. They, was, they started that down in Texas. So there was a couple who started doing the same thing. They started doing it again a few days ago. They filmed themselves licking some ice cream and putting it back. And then you go to their channel and it's basically a bunch of, just a bunch of unfunny stunts and skits and pranks. It, real mad corny and they were under investigation by the police and then they had to come clean and they were like, yeah, you know, we were just clout chasing. Uh, yeah, we, we bought the ice cream. We, we, we licked it, but we actually bought it. Here's the TMZ story on it. Hold on. Hold on one second. This is the TMZ story. Ice cream liquors, they faked the whole thing for clout. They bought the tub that they licked. So they got a channel and they, they just do a bunch of like real goofy stuff for clicks. This is where we are now. And I don't, that hairline is giving me non-FBA, by the way. And a lot of people were pissed. So they went in the store licking ice cream. And I can tell they kind of faked it. I said, they, they're just doing things for YouTube clicks. We got a we we have a culture now where we we're in a time now where you have a bunch of people who have no talent. Yeah. You got a lot of people with just zero talent. You don't have anything interesting to say. You don't have anything to really bring to the table. So now it's like grown as children. You just do something dumb as hell in order for somebody to look at you. Yeah. You just look, you do and say dumb stuff just to be seen. Anything to be seen. This is how inconsequential a lot of people feel. See, the thing in life, man, you have to get out of here and bring something to society that's worthy of bettering them. Yeah? Yeah, there was another white man. Y'all see that? The white man who crashed a plane online and they arrested his ignorant ass. He was flying a plane, and he jumped out the plane and deliberately crashed it. It was one of those small little planes. Then the FAA got at him because you ain't supposed to do that. People will do anything for clout, man. My feelings on Jay Moran. Look, Jay, they caught, Jay was online with another gun. This is my thing. I, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Let me, for those who don't know, Jay is, um, what is it, basketball player or football player? What, what is Jay, who does he play for? Who does Jay play for? Because I don't even keep up with sports like that, to be honest. Hold on. So who does Jay play for? All right, so Jay Morant, he was, um, he got suspended again, Memphis Grizzlies. He played for the Memphis Grizzlies. So Jay, he was flashing a gun on social media a while back and got suspended. Now he's doing it again. He got another gun and he's flashing the gun on social media with the homie. He got suspended for flashing the gun on Instagram. All right. So my thing is this. If Jay is going to go this route, just keep flashing guns and losing his money, you, you might as well do it for a purpose. This goes back to the attention whoring. See, this is my thing. I think Jay has a right to flash his gun. I don't think they should suspend him. But the problem is, Jay is just doing this shit for, for attention, for internet attention. If Jay was doing it to say, hey, is it Ja? My bad. Ja. Pronounce Ja. I'm telling you, I don't keep up with this shit. I don't keep up with that. I don't really keep up with it. Ja. All right? Ja. Okay. That, Y'all got that. His name is Ja. I said Jay. All right? Ja like Ja rule. All right. I promise you, I don't. this is how I don't keep up with it. I do not keep up with it at all. Here's the problem with Ja. Ja's just doing this shit for clout. If Ja was doing it, promoting Second Amendment rights, I'm all in with him. You dig? If he was doing it to promote something like Second Amendment, because my thing is, you got white politicians and people, they post guns all the time. There's nothing wrong with posting your gun. I don't think they should suspend the guy. But Ja, 
as you guys say. He, there's no movement behind what he's doing. It's really just for clout. It's really just for some damn clout, man. And that's not cool. Yeah? So that's why I can't really get behind that. Yeah, he's kicking it with his friends being goofy. But yeah, dude, if you know they're about to mess up your bag, yeah, you, you might want to chill out. Unless you're doing it for a bigger purpose, which he's not doing it for a bigger purpose. Yeah, don't don't blow your bag just hanging out with your buddies trying to show out, you know? And somebody, you said somebody could be threatening him. You don't flash your gun. If somebody's threatening you, you put your gun down and you don't pull it out until you need it. You understand? I, I get what it is, man. Look, black people who are entertainers, black people who are in the spotlight, uh, a lot of times you do get targeted. A lot of people will target you, unfortunately. So you want to let the streets know that you're holding. I get that. Yeah. I get that. But damn all of that trolling and, and attention whoring. That's not cool. All right, let me put some on Facebook to let everybody know we're live. But um, anyway, guys, later on this week, possibly tomorrow, if you guys, who, got, who all has FBA stream? Because I'm going to put up, there's going to be um, a mini documentary slash reality show that we did about the museum. A lot of folks have been asking me to show some stuff in relations to the Hidden History Museum, and we're going to have that on FBA stream. It's called Tariq Nasheed's Museum Life. So it just kind of gives you a peek on what we do at the museum every day. It kind of gives you a peek, and it's some, it's some real fun stuff. It kind of gives you a peek of what we do. So if you have FBA stream, you'll be able to watch that first. And if you don't have it, y'all need to go to FBAStream.com and sign up for FBA Stream to get that exclusive on FBA Stream. I'm going to show you guys a clip. I'll post up a clip tomorrow on my social media. But um, shout out to everybody who's coming down to Dallas to the um, FBA Expo. That's going to be phenomenal. We got um, so many phenomenal speakers we got a lot of phenomenal, let me show the flyer. We got a, a lot of phenomenal speakers. We got um, Riza Islam, we got King Cam, we got Brother Ben X, we got Kaba Kabane, um, Tahuti Mayara, we have, oh man, so many people. And also we got musical guests, we got Kiki Wyatt, and we got um, the legendary Mr. Eric Benet performing. So it's gonna be a great, great thing. It's gonna be a well-rounded event Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we got Vicki Dillard coming, Red Pill, Blue Pill, like good brother Marcel Dixon. It's going to be a phenomenal event. Y'all going to have a lot of good game. We got so many phenomenal vendors. Yes, we got some FBA Expo shirts. That's going to be down there. You can get the shirts or you can get it online at FBAExpo.com. Um, it's going to be a well-rounded um, day, man. It's going to be a lot of fun forums, a lot of educational forums, a lot of informative forums and workshops. And then at the end of the night, and we're going to wind it down with the music acts. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, we got Eric, Eric Benet is that dude. Eric Benet is that guy. Yes, Professor Honey. That sister's thorough. Yeah, she holding. She, she holding down there, but she's, she's very thorough. Very smart sister. Professor Honey is going to be there. Yeah? It's going to be phenomenal. See, Eric Benet is that dude. Oh, Eric Benet is that guy. And Kiki is a phenomenal singer. It's going to be a very great program throughout the whole day. I want to hear Eric Benet do um, that Georgie Porgy song. Georgie, that's the, that's the jam. I'm going to be backstage grooving with some flip-flops on. It's going to be popping. Yes, indeed. Our FBA brother from Milwaukee. We got a, that's a phenomenal lineup, man. Eric Benet is that guy. Yes, indeed. Man. Somebody said, what about me slide? Yeah, we should open. Somebody, I, 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 I got some emails today, as a matter of fact. Some people overseas want us to do another Mink Slide album. Those Mink Slide albums, because they're funk records, the, the overseas market, oh, they love that shit. They really, really love 
that funk. We got a big, big audience overseas for Mink Slide. Even here, we got a big audience here, but really overseas, they love that funk stuff, man. They absolutely love it over there. That's a real big market of them. Yeah. So it's going to be popping. And by the way, um, you guys can come down to the museum and get the Mink Slide album. We got the vinyl albums for Mink Slide. We got the Egyptian Musk album on vinyl. And that's a collector's item. So if you're in L.A., come on down to the museum. Come down any day and just get you a copy of the album. We got the, the Mink Slide album. And we, we got these right here. Y'all better come get one of these. Y'all better come. It's a chicken salad. You better come get one of these. It's a chicken salad. People are loving the, the FBA Black Power flags. This is the Black Power version of the FBA flag. The mini flag. I got this in my car. People are putting this in the cars to let to let other people know what it is. This is our lineage right here. All right. This is our goddamn lineage right here, ladies and gentlemen, representing the beautiful black power flag at officialfba.com. Yeah. Officialfba.com. Yeah. So yes indeed. Oh yeah, you better go look up Mink Slide. Y'all, y'all seen some of the Mink Slide stuff? How many of y'all didn't know I had a funk band called Mink Slide? Man, we're all on our album debuted on Billboard on number twelve on R&B charts. The second album was um, in the top one hundred. Yeah, man, we represented. I'm gonna do another Mink project, Mink Slide project soon. Hey, yeah, that Mink Slide stuff slaps. But um. Anyway, let's let's get into some of the stuff that we want to talk about. Shout out to Anthony Williams from Canada. Anthony, come on down, man. You're Canadian, born of Trinidadian descent. Come on down, man. The doors are open. People who are non-FBA can come on down. Listen, it's for everybody to come on down and just represent. We just we're we're emphasizing and representing FBA culture, but everybody who's non-FBA who's respectful of the culture, just like when we go to the Puerto Rican Day Parade, we're paying homage and showing respect to them. When FBAs go to the Caribbean parades up there in Brooklyn and in New York, we're showing respect. Same thing. Same thing. Yeah, no, John Legend is, no, I said John Legend. Eric Benet is a legend. Oh, Eric Benet is a damn legend. Yes, he is. Eric Benet is a legend. That's a phenomenal performer. Yes, indeed. But listen, this is what we're talking about today. While everybody is coming on in the room, all right, we're waiting on everybody to come on in the room. We're talking about Joe Biden. You know, election season is next year. Well, it's election season now. They're gearing up for it. And the Biden administration, they've been dumping on black society ever since he's been in office. His numbers are down right now. His polling numbers, people are doing tests and seeing that black folks ain't really rocking with Biden like that. Yeah. Somebody say, yes, Eric, Eric Benet can sing. That's what I'm saying. He's a legend. That dude can sing, dude. That brother's a singer, singer. He's a phenomenal singer, phenomenal range. He's a legend. You don't have too much of that out here now. You know? But listen, listen. So like I said, right now, with the Biden administration, Biden and those guys, they've been throwing us under the bus ever since him and Kamami's been in office. They ain't done a damn thing for us. And now they see those black polling numbers dwindling. And now it's time for Biden to go on the chicken and watermelon tour. So now he's going around. They're starting the pandering already. They're already starting the pandering, all right? They went up to Howard University. They got some Sambos up at Howard to give Biden some kind of honorary degree. Howard University, boy, how, look, let me, I'm not going to diss Howard too much because I got a lot of listeners. I got a lot of people who support me who go to Howard. I'm not going to dump on Howard. But Howard, there's been a cloud over you guys ever since y'all threw our sister, Frances Cress Welsing, under the bus years ago. You understand? Howard University, let me keep it a buck. 
you guys still haven't atoned for doing that. Y'all threw our queen mother, Frances Fr Cress Welsing, under the bus. You know, I hold that sister very near and dear. That is a legend to me and to many of us out here. So y'all got to really atone for that, Howard University. Y'all really have to atone for that at some point. Y'all did that sister dirty, and that's one of our scholar warriors, one of our legends. Y'all did our sister dirty over at Howard University. But I digress. So Howard, they set up here and gave Biden some kind of honorary award. Yeah, from what I understand at Howard, it's Tether Palooza up there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's Boulay Central. Yeah. It's Boulay Central. Say so they almost fired Felicia Rashad. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, Howard threw our sister under the bus. They won't answer any emails about it, Nikki. Yeah, it's 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 real tetherfied up there now. It's real tetherfied. So Howard was doing the boule thing, and they let Biden get up there and Biden is going to start using some of our language, talking about white supremacy. All right, let's play Biden talking about the biggest threat is white supremacy, which we know. But let's let's hear Biden discuss this. All right, hold on. Let me play the clip of Biden up at Howard. All right, so this is your boy Biden. Hold on. Wait, wait, let me turn it up. American history has not always been a fairy tale. From the start, it's been a constant push and pull for more than 240 years. Between the best of us, the American ideal that we're all created equal, and the worst of us, the harsh reality that racism has long torn us apart. It's a battle that's never really over. But on the best days, enough of us have the guts and the hearts to st stand up for the best in us. Well, you notice how empty and vague this is. This is like the white Obama. This is empty, vague. All right, racism is bad. Yeah, 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 we know. What are you going to do about it? This is that Obama stuff, because he was part of the Obama administration. He was the vice president. Same thing. You get around black people and, well, racism is bad and, you know, you can't rise up to the occasion and you, you, it, it quells the best of us. And uh, You're not saying that. You're just talking and not saying nothing. Choose. Love over hate. Unity over disunion. Progress over retreat. Empty, okay, just empty word salad. Oh, they get around us and it's empty word salad. I'm going to play the rest, but just notice the empty word salad. Now, when you get around Asians, hey, Asians, you've been treated bad and we got $30 billion coming your way. Huh? You see? Oh, Hispanics, oh, they treated you bad at the border. We got uh, um, about four billion of them fangs waiting on you and your family when you get over here. You know, you know, they get to talking money. They get to talking specifics with these other groups. With us, oh, you know, racism is so bad, but oh, we got to choose love over hate, integration over segregation, ha politeness over hostility. What are you talking about, dude? What's all these vagaries? I don't want to hear that. Where's the money? Let me play the rest of this dude. Hold on, man. This vague ass talk. All right, hold on. Stand up against the poison of white supremacy as I did my inaugural address to a single out as the most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. We can finally resolve those ongoing questions about who we are as a nation. That puts strength of our diversity at the center of American life. The future that celebrates and learns from history. A future for all Americans. A future I see you leading. And I'm not, again, exaggerating. You are going to be leading it. Again, let's be clear. 
There are those that don't see you and don't want this future. There are those... Which is you, yo ass. You, Biden, you're one of those who don't want to see our future. ...to demonize and pit people against one another. And there are those who do anything and everything, no matter how desperate or immoral, to hold on to power. And that's never going to be an easy battle. But I know this, the oldest, most sinister forces may believe they'll determine America's future, but they are wrong. We will determine America's future. Okay, that, that was empty and vague, dude. Yeah, the biggest threat is white supremacy. Okay, we know that. What have you done about it? What have you done about it, Joe Biden? Nothing. Joe Biden and his administration, they're not punishing any white supremacist groups. Hold on, there's another part of this I wanted to play too. Hold on, let me play another part of this. There's another part of it. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me raise this up a little bit. Hold on. All right, hold on. And a fairy tale. From, From the start, start it's been a constant push and pull for more than 204 years. Between the best of us, the American ideal that we're all created equal, and the worst of us, the harsh reality that racism has long torn us apart. It's a battle. It's never really over. But on the best days, enough of us have the guts and the hearts to stand up to the best in us. To choose love or hate, unity over disunity, progress over retreat. To stand up against the poison, white supremacy that I did my honor to address to a single out as the most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. And I'm not saying this because I'm not a black HBCU. I say it wherever I go. Oh, that's the part that the New York Times cut out. Yeah, that's what I wanted y'all to hear. He said, I'm not saying that just because I'm at a black HBCU. Now, the New York Times, they cut that part out. Let me show you how they cut that out. Right after he said white supremacy. Hold on, wait, wait. They cut that part out. The black. Hold on. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. This is the, this is the original. But I did my honor to address to a single out as the most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. All right, now let's hear the New York Time. Wow, what did I do with it? What did I do with it? Hold on one second. I gotta find. I gotta find where I just had it. I want to play the New York Times version of it. I want to play that New York Times version of it, because then they they cut it out. They cut out the part. Where is it? Come on, man. Nah, I don't, how am I losing? I just had it. How am I gonna lose it? And I just had it. Hold on. Uh, uh, I just had it. And I'm going to play that part. Hold on. Where is that? Uh, da, da, da. See, nah, I can't find it. I hate when I do that. I want to play that part where he said it in the New York Times cut it out. That's what I was looking for. And now I cannot find it. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on one second. Let me try one more thing. Let me try one more thing and see if I can get it popping. Da, da. Oops, I can't find the shit now. Now I can't find it. Ah, uh, now I can't find it. I wanted to play the edited version of it. They cleaned it up for him. But yeah, on, on the raw version, he was like, yeah, I'm not saying that just because I'm here at an HBCU with black people. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly why you're saying it, Joe. That's the only reason why you're saying that. Yes, that's the only reason why you're saying it is because you're in front of a bunch of black folks and you're trying to get some damn votes. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not just saying white supremacy because I'm in a room full of niggas. I mean, I mean black people. I'm not a. I'm not just saying it because I'm in here with you guys. That's the only reason you're saying it, Joe. Yeah. That's the only reason you're saying it. So he's pandering already, and he, Joe, put up this tweet, another tweet. Uh, when did he put? He put this up a couple of days ago. He put this up. Him and Katanji Brown and Kamala. We promised. We kept our promise because we keep calling him out for not doing a damn thing for black folks. So, no, I kept my promise. I did something for black people. I put the first black woman on the Supreme Court. And we've appointed more black women to the federal circuit courts than all the previous presidents combined. And we're not done yet. So, you got a, a, a cache of mammies who ain't done a damn thing for the black collective, you got a mammy who ain't gonna do a damn thing, lift one finger for black folks and gonna go home to her damn zaddy. That's not a, a plus for us. All right, you, you getting a plantation mammy is not a plus for us. We ain't doing that game no more. We're not playing the plantation mammy game. We're not playing that game where you elevate mammies and we're supposed to have some kind of proxy satisfaction from you elevating the mammies and then you switching Kamala, her ethnicity on and off. One day she's Asian, the next day she's a sister girl. No. And she ain't gonna do a damn thing for black society. No. No, thank you. We ain't playing that game no more. The, the chicken and watermelon tour is coming off on a bad start. We're not doing the chicken and watermelon. Let's just offer you symbolic plantation giblets and that's going to be the black outreach. No, we need our paper and them flooding the zone with all of these immigrant groups because this, the way they're opening up the floodgates with these immigrants is insane. And not only are they opening up the floodgates, they are giving these immigrant groups all types of money. They're putting these people in hotels up in Chicago and other cities you got homeless people laying around the streets and you got these non-citizens rushing the border and getting nice hotel rooms. So they're funding this. This is being funded from the top. Out there in Chicago, shout out to the people in Chicago for fighting back. The people in Chicago are organized saying, hey, we don't want this. We don't want these people flooding into our neighborhoods because we're resource strapped as it is. We don't have enough resources. We have to beg for resources. And you guys are dumping these people here and giving them our tax dollars. Yeah? They're dropping these people off in black areas. You know that, right? They're opening up these floodgates and dropping these folks off in black areas, putting them around places where they are homeless people who are black who can't get a dime. Putting them in luxury buildings. They're funding these people the dominant society, but then when we start talking about our reparations, then, like, oh, God, did we don't have the freaking money, man. Yeah, you got it for these damn non-citizens. I don't want to hear that we ain't got no money nonsense. They got plenty of money. They got our tax dollars because that money is our money. And also, these white supremacists are funding these white supremacist suspect terrorists they're funding these terrorists like that Daniel Penny guy. That guy got over a million dollars in uh, in a matter of days for lynching Jordan Neely. And that was a lynching, let's be clear. That was a straight up and down lynching. In every sense of the word, a lynching is basically you accuse somebody of some type of criminality and you kill or punish them without due process of the law. That's what a lynching is and that's what happened to him. That man was lynched. You have to use the word lynch when you talk about that. Yeah? But they are flooding the zone with these non-citizens. And lynching black homeless people out here and funding the lynchers. You, you dig? So Biden going on this chicken and watermelon tour, that's not going to work. And also they got the minions. They got all of these Democratic shields. They're ramping up, getting ready to do their, their, their trolling and their campaigning. And they're 
bad faith arguments. They have this one guy, this Brian Hopkins guy, who's a Democratic shield. So this is just an example of what y'all about to see. Um, he was all in my mentions because I was criticizing Biden. And he was like, you rather Trump, who elevates only himself. Biden has done more for black people in a year than Trump, the Bush family, and Reagan combined. This is Democratic shield talk. So what you're going to do what they're going to do, they're going to start flooding the zone with these Democratic shills who's just going to get out here and lie to us. They're going to get out here with all of these talking points from the DNC where they're lying their asses off about what Biden has done. They're going to start trying to twist all of this stuff. They're going to throw a whole bunch of crap on the wall and see what slides down. Here's another tweet by this Democratic shill. What have Democrats done for black people? Well, here is Biden's list alone. He dedicated $1 billion to black-owned businesses through Economic Opportunity Coalition. Okay, that's a damn lie. All right, hold on. Hold on, let's look that up. Hold on. Let's look that up. Let's look that up, the Economic Opportunity Coalition. All right, let's look it up. Let's go to the page. And I haven't even seen this yet, and I know it's a trick bag. I haven't even seen this yet, and I know it's a trick bag, because I know Biden, I know that administration. Hold on. The Economic Opportunity Coalition. Here we go. The corporations and foundations that our members of the EOC have committed to aligning major investments in communities of color with investments made by the Biden-Harris administration, right? The trick bag is in the first damn sentence, right? I haven't even seen this yet, and I knew it was a trick bag. I didn't even see this website yet, and I knew it was a damn trick bag. The trick bag was in the first sentence, right there. Communities of color, right, right there. So right there, debunked. That is too easy to debunk these people. You can debunk these people with your damn eyes closed. That money goes to everybody else besides black people. Let me tell y'all something, man. When we get, whenever they say they done done something for some black business, you better call that out, dude. You better call that stuff out because, man, we got the museum and you, most museums are kept afloat by grants, funding from the city, funding from the state, funding from the federal commissions and all that. And man, we can't get grants for nothing because a lot of those grants that were supposed to be for people of color, they'll say, well, the Black folks, there is some for you. There are grants for black people. You go look at it. You just got to go find it. And all of it is all minority, people of color, um, disenfranchised community. So we, we can't get any grants because all the money is used up. Even in the city of L.A., we try to get grants and stuff to keep the museum afloat. And we talk to these people and that money goes to all of these Latino groups, all of these minority shits. I'm telling you firsthand. You call up there and you start talking to the people. Everybody has a Hispanic last name. And then when you hit them up, the budget is ate up already. And we know where the money's gone. Everybody running these little things all got Hispanic last names. They didn't sent all the money to their people. These are our tax dollars. So black folks, we can't get shit. We don't get none of that stuff. I'm telling you firsthand. You spoke to a museum owner in Donaldsville, L in Louisiana. Man, I'm the, man, this museum thing is harder than I thought. I'm like, I saw all these museum grants and all that stuff for museums and minority and people of color. And then once you say, hey, you, we have a black museum, the, the Native Americans, the, the, the $5 Indians, the Hispanics, the Asians, the, the Jewish community, the Arabs, all of them get first dibs on it. And then what little crumbs we're supposed to get? We don't even get the crumbs. We do not even get the damn crumbs. And up there in the Bay, there's, we went to the Bay Area. There was about five damn Asian museums in like a 
like a five mile radius. They had an Asian museum on every other corner up in like San Francisco up in the Bay. And I was asking people up in the Bay, man, where's the Black Panther Museum? Damn, there should be a Black Panther Museum. And you have certain small little museums that's struggling up there in the Bay. I'm, I'm telling you firsthand stuff, man. I'm telling you firsthand that minority people of color bullshit, we should have stopped that a long time ago, man. We have to stop that. The minute we say that, we undermine ourselves. The minute we start saying people of color, uh, minority, we shoot ourselves in the foot. That money will not go to us. I'm telling you firsthand, that money don't go to us. And we sit here using these terms thinking that we're earning some type of camaraderie with these people. We're not. They want us to use these terms because that justifies them coming in and dibbing and dabbing all the damn money. Yeah? I'm telling you, dude. Yeah, you've seen the same thing with your 501c3. Yeah, the black nonprofits, man, oh, you, you go through hell. That's why we got to have folks. We got to have the community. That's why it's important for everybody to support the Hidden History Museum. With some of the stuff we got popping, man, we really, really need the community to, to support that. For real, for real, for real, for real. You dig? And then on top of that, we get, we get fed niggas thrown at us too. That's another thing. Unfortunately, in our community, it's so easy to flip niggas and, and get them on the fed payroll. So then we have another thing going. We already get a lack of funding from the state and the city. And then we try to get stuff on the grassroots. We got the fed sending down ops trying to do shit like sabotage, and they've been doing that since the 60s. Y'all remember Gar uh, um, Darthard Perry? He would go around to the, the, the black nonprofit um, institutions and burn them down for the damn FBI. The FBI had this coon going around burning down black folk shit. They're building stuff for the community, and they had this coon burning it down. You, you see? So not only do we not get the funding, we get sabotaged. So we got to be, we have to fund things on a grassroots and we got to be very serious about that. We got to be very, 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 very serious about funding things on the grassroots, man. When we have grassroots things popping, we the, the community, especially when it's constructive and when it's some historic stuff, we got to fund it from the grassroots, man. That's so very important. You understand? You had a business in Chicago. You researched the minority contracts. White women, oh, yep, yep. The white women get that minority stuff. The white women get dibs on that. Gay white dudes. That's another thing. That's another thing. You call up there. I'm telling you, dude, when you call these places where all of this minority funding is supposed to come from and you look at the people who's running it, that's going to tell you everything you need to know. When you call up here and you hear a bunch of Hispanics running it, that's where the money is going. You call another place that's supposed to be for minorities, it's a bunch of Asians running it, that's where the money goes. And then you look in the neighborhood where that, that headquarters is, and it's a bunch of Asian businesses and museums funded. Also, you call up there and uh, it's a white man with a lisp, all that money is going to the white LGBT community. That's another thing. Because we talked to some folks who run some of these diversity funding things where you get grants for diversity and historic things and it's a bunch of rainbow flags all over the place. Uh, yeah, the, the budget, we've exhausted our budget. Oh, you've exhausted the budget now. Everybody in here looks papered up. Everybody got brand new booty shorts and leg warmers. Everybody's papered up in here, but the budget is exhausted. Dude, I'm telling you, we gotta. We should have been off that minority stuff a long time ago, dude. We got to start talking up for our stuff. We got to talk for our stuff. That minority thing shot us in the foot, dude. I'm telling you from firsthand experience, dude. 
There's a lot of grant money out here and we get the last dibs on it because we minoritize it and diversify it. We use all of these terms that give every, we take the grievance, we sit up here, we get abused, we get shot and we get harmed by the system. And then to rectify it, we start talking about, well, we're gonna have some, some, some programs that correct these things for people of color. And then they start giving the money to everybody but us. Man, we got to stop that. We got to stop that, family. But let me go back to the, the guy who's caping for Biden. So we that whole minority, person of color, community of color stuff, that shows us where we are. All right. Let's go back to this guy. He dedicated a billion dollars to black-owned businesses, which is a lie signed an executive order when Congress failed to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Do I even need to go there? That nothing burger that ain't done nothing to harm, to punish no race soldier, they ain't punished nobody with that. That's a nothing burger. They didn't punish nobody with that. All right. Um, signed the Student Debt Cancellation Act which overwhelmingly benefits black borrowers. Republicans sued to stop. Okay, that's a, that's a lift all and black folks get some too. So that ain't for black people. Watch their little trick ass words. Watch their trick words. Well, it, it overwhelmingly helped. Like, no, that's for everybody. That's a, a lift all program. And we're supposed to just grass for the crumbs that trickle down. That ain't no program for us. You see how desperate their arguments get? Their arguments get extremely desperate. Hold on, let me read the rest of it. Oh, this one is very insulting. Sign the Emmett Till Lynching Act. Whoop, whoop, womp, womp. And what does that mean? He signed the Emmett Till lynching act. Number one, the woman who helped get Emmett Till killed just died recently. They wouldn't do th a, a thing to do, lay a finger on that woman. They didn't do anything to touch that woman. Carolyn Bryant lived to old age. The woman who was involved in the murder of Emmett Till when this, who is still alive when this act was put into place, they didn't do anything to her, let alone to anybody else. They haven't punished nobody because of that lynching act. And our brother Jordan nearly got lynched. They're not doing anything to the man who lynched him. They're not putting federal charges on him. We get lynched all the time and they don't do anything to help us from getting lynched. They didn't do anything to the woman who was a part of what the bill was named after. That woman sat around here protected and living to old age. That was a nothing burger. That was the biggest nothing burger on the face of the goddamn planet, dude. Don't ever brag about that damn Emmett Till lynching act. That don't mean nothing. Y'all don't do anything with it. You don't enforce it. You didn't enforce anything. All right. What's this? The Justice 40 initiative dedicated 40% of certain federal funding to black communities. I'm not going to even look it up because I know it's minority it's some minority stuff. Well, you know what? Let me look it up. Let me just go ahead and look it up real quick. The Justice 40 Initiative. Let me look it up. All right. Let me look it up. The Justice 40. Let me look it up. All right. Hold on. All right. Okay. Let's look it up. Okay. Okay. God damn. Here we go. See, I, the first sentence, here we go. This is the Justice 40. Here we go. The ju for the first time in our history, the federal government has made it a goal that 40% of all the overall benefits for certain federal investments flow to disadvantaged communities that are marginalized, underserved, and overburdened by pollution. Oh, God. Where's the black thing? What black where? 
See, watch when they say that, man. They play this game all the time. They sit up and say, he did all this for black people. And then when you look up the bill, black ain't in that shit nowhere. This is for underserved, marginalized, and overburdened communities, um, overburdened by pollution. Nothing about black people, dude. This is how desperate they are. I, already, I, I didn't even see this and I knew what it was going to say. It's a trick bag, guys. Watch these Democratic shields who run out here and tell you these talking points. You see how easy it is to debunk these people? Their job is to flood the zone and just waste your time lying nonstop. They're reduced to lying. And the last one dedicated $2.2 billion to black farmers who, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm not going to even go there. I'm not going to waste your time on that one. I'm not going to waste your time. All right. I'm not going to waste time. That, that's enough. I'm, I won't even go there. I won't even start on the black farmer um, finesse. I'm not going to even start on that. I'm not going to even go there. You guys already, if you don't know, you already know that finesse. They didn't, the black farmers didn't get a damn thing. That's a finesse. So I won't even go there. I'll be here for another hour. So... You're going to hear a lot of these lies, family. This is why I'm giving you the game right now. When you start hearing these lies, understand that it's all debunked. It's all lies. They didn't do anything specifically for black people. These are catch-all um, um, programs. These are lift-all programs. These are trick word programs. It's nothing specific for us. We don't get it. And I'm telling you from experience, somebody who's running a nonprofit, we got a museum, when we try to get funding from any state, uh, federal, or city entity, they got all of this trick bag language in here, and we don't get nothing. That money is spent for all of these other groups except us, dude. I'm telling you from experience. Don't let these people lie to you. Yeah? Well, this is why we got to be codified. We got to start really supporting each other heavy. We have to start aggregating our funds with each other, heavy. We got to really start doing that. Some of our institutions, we have to start funding them ourselves and circulating our resources to fund things within our community that helps our community. We really got to do that. And we got to start getting these people out of power if they don't use our language. We have to make sure anytime they come to the table, they don't put a policy to get with trick bag language in it. That's the problem. We sit there and let them go up to Howard University and then do a bunch of empty word salad and they don't get called out. That has to be called out by the people at the damn school. They need to be online calling that stuff out. That stuff has to be called out, family. It has to be called out majorly. Yeah? Because things are getting real out here, man. Especially in New York. Everybody's watching this case in New York very, very closely with um, Jordan Neely. Because, you know, this Daniel Penny guy, they're trying to make a hero. Not trying. They, they, make, they made a hero out of this guy. This guy's representing systematic white supremacy. The white supremacists have no heroes. Got to understand that. These people, they have no heroes. And the heroes that they get are usually these white supremacist suspects who go out here and kill black people. Notice the only heroes they got are these people who go out here and somehow lynch a black person. These are the heroes of white supremacist society. The Zimmermans, the um, um, Officer Yanez's. Uh, what's that guy who killed uh, Pantaleo, who killed Eric Garner? Um, these people who lynch black folks, who get all of this money for lynching black people. These are the heroes within white supremacist society. So this guy, Penny, they're making a hero out of this guy. So he went into court where, he, where they let him turn himself in. They gave him that little weak second degree manslaughter charge. And he went up in court, you know, rocking. He had the... Um, suit with the the bands on with the white strings now there's a lot of people who wear bands with white strings but some people wear certain things and in a certain context 
Some people, for example, they wear, I know my, back in the day, people would wear a certain type of blue Nikes. Now, the average civilian wearing some blue Nikes, they're just wearing them to, to be comfortable when they go jogging. But for a long time out here in LA, that was a, a sign for certain crip sets to wear a certain pair of Nikes, certain blue Nikes. That was a sign for certain crip sets. You think? When you saw the Nikes, you kind of knew what set they were from. And with white supremacists, what they do, a lot of them like to wear black shoes with white laces. They send little signals to each other. I've talked about this many times. A lot of skinhead groups, um, they do this. They wear the black shoes with the white laces, sometimes red laces um, for certain rank within white supremacist organizations. But a lot of times they wear the white, the black shoes with the white laces. When he killed, when this penny guy killed Jordan Neely, he had on the black shoes with white laces, white over black. That's white over black. And let me tell you something. Yeah, the Cortez Knights, yeah. That's what the Crips used to wear. But um, this guy here, him wearing a suit with these white laces and black vans, that's not a coincidence, guys. He's sending a message. That's a message that he's sending. He's sending a message to his white supremacist suspect supporters. That's sending a message, right? You better understand when they send messages. Just like sometimes these white supremacist suspects will get in court after they done done a murder and throw up an okay signal. Remember when that guy who did that massacre out there in, a, I want to say New Zealand, he went up in court and threw up the okay signal. Yeah, these people know what they're doing. Those are vans, right? Those are vans. He's wearing vans. No, when I say Nike Cortez, I'm talking about the Crips. That was something else. I'm talking about the Crips used to wear the Nike Cortez. This guy's wearing the bands. A lot of these um, guys who commit these white supremacists or suspected white supremacist killings, a lot of them have on the black shoes with the white laces. So they send messages to each other. They send messages. They know how to send these dog whistles. You know? And it's up to us to catch this stuff and know what we're dealing with. And let me say this, my New Yorkers, again, and, and, and to be fair, a lot of brothers hit me up from New York. They were like, yo, the train they were on, you know, what when that happened, you know, there were, you know, a lot of brothers weren't on that train or whatever. They were kind of explaining, and I, I get it. It might not have been a lot of black, I don't know. But listen, y'all don't ever let no black person get hemmed up like that if you are around. Y'all don't ever let another black person get hemmed up in broad daylight like that. You understand? You don't let you don't let other black people get hemmed up like that if you are around. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm pretty sure there were more tethers on that damn train. Off code tethers, but let me say, look. I make a pledge to any black person, any black person listening to me. I got a pledge that I'm making to you, my own personal pledge. If somebody's a white supremacist hemming you up somewhere, if you're getting choked out by a white supremacist, I promise if I'm there, I will not let that happen to you. That's my pledge to any black person out there. Any of you, I'm not Billy Badass, but I'd be damned if I will sit up here and let you get choked out by a damn white supremacist. That's never going to happen if I'm there. And I'm not super nigga, but I am not going to sit there. I would not let y'all get hemmed up if I'm there. You are not getting choked out by no white supremacist with me around. That's my personal pledge. If other niggas want to sit there, ooh, Ooh, let that let him go now. Nah. Y'all want to buck your eyes? That's on you, man. I'm not. I'm not letting no black person. You're not getting choked out on my damn watch, man. There's no way I'm gonna sit up and let that happen to no black person. You understand? That's on everything. Damn. And to be honest, I thought that was just how it's supposed to be. Right, yeah, with designer. Yeah, with the, the situation with designer. 
talked about that before. I saw design. He was getting him to buy the cops. I wasn't going to let that happen. I, okay, I wouldn't stop that shit. I'm not letting no black person. I'm just not. I'm not letting no black person get hemmed up, dude. That just don't sit right with my spirit. I, it just don't sit right with my damn spirit. Dude, I done walked in between cops with guns out on niggas and be like, hey, y'all got to put that shit down. Y'all gun. No, y'all cut that out today. There ain't nobody going to get shot. We all going to get shot today if that's it. Put y'all fucking guns down, dude. Damn. My nigga Nipsey did that before. There, there's a video of somebody, the cops were him and somebody up. Nipsey jumped in between them and stopped the cops from him and somebody up. Our good brother Nipsey, rest in power to Nipsey. There's a video of Nipsey. Somebody was him and the cops was him and somebody up and Nipsey came and jumped, jumped in between them and wouldn't let the, the cops him the brother up. Y'all know that? There's a video circulating with our brother Nipsey. Man, I, I, I can't go out like a coward like that, man. I... Our ancestors, man, didn't fight the way they fought for, for any of us to go out like no damn cowards, you know? Not to be super nigga. You don't want to be super nigga, but damn, I ain't no coward either. Shit. I just, I ain't sitting up letting no black person get hemmed up. I got too much of a maroon spirit, you know? That's just on GP, you know? That's just on GP. Pac too. Yeah, Tupac. When Tupac saw some people, he saw a brother get hemmed up by some suspected white supremacists. Tupac pulled his car open, pulled his car over, got out that car, and went into action. You dig? And, and, and hit two undercover race soldiers. Yeah? Yeah, I just... We, we got to get off that. Letting that happen. Yeah, we got to get off that letting that happen. We got to kind of have each other's backs out here. You know? We got to look out for each other. Because, see, what happens is this whole thing where Negroes want to start caping for all these other people. Y'all remember that, um, that, what is he, MM, UFC fighter, Israel... Adesanya, y'all remember him? Remember this guy? Where is he from again? He's the tether. Where is he from? Israel Adesanya. Where is he from? Remember him? Like a year ago, he was caping for Joe Rogan's racism. People were calling Joe Rogan out for Joe Rogan's racism. We were calling Joe Rogan out. And this guy right here, um, what is he? Is he Nigerian? What is this guy, family? Help me out. What is this guy? What is Israel Adesanya? Sanya? What is he? He's from Nigeria, right? He was fighting. He was, was he in New Zealand? He's New Zealand and Nigerian or something like that. He's the tether. We know that. New Zealand and Nigeria. So now we were calling out Joe Rogan, if y'all don't remember. And this is what he had to say. Don't forget this. Hold on. This is what he had to say about Joe Rogan's racism. No, no, no. There's, a, there's a lot of cunts in this game. There's a lot of snakes in this game. I've been in this fight game since 2008. And Joe Rogan is one of the nicest, coolest, humble motherfuckers I've had the pleasure of working with. Understand that. And you know, it's just, fuck the noise, man. You know what they're trying to do. You can't control the man. And he's got the biggest platform in the world right now. So that's my nigga, Joe Rogan. Fuck the noise. Okay, so this non-FBA tether wanted to put the cape on for Joe Rogan. We were calling Joe Rogan's racism out. So they get this Negro. Oh, that's my nigga. Fuck the haters. All right. So now this Israel guy, this guy, he's in a little situation now with his white ex-girlfriend. His white ex-girlfriend, him and his white boo, She's taking him to court for half his money. <laughs> oh, his white, his boo thing. He's dating this white girl and now she's about to clean this nigga out for all his damn money. So she's in court trying to get half of the bag. She wants half. She ain't even married. Oh, Becky is trying to get half the bag. 
she's using her whiteness to her advantage. All right. Oh, Becky's trying to get the whole bag. Taking him to court to take half his earnings. Um, da, 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 da. Here he claims that she's looking to take half the money he's made despite never having been married or having kids together. Due to her time spent of her taking care of him and supporting him through his years of rising to fame. So now white Becky is trying to get the bag. Is that your nigga too? Because she's using her whiteness, dude. Nigga, don't you dare come to the black community. Oh, don't you dare. Oh, don't you dare try to come to us for some support, nigga. Don't you dare. I'm telling you now, Israel, don't even try it, my G. Oh, you better not bring your black ass over to us. Niggas, guess what? This white woman I was dating is a racist. She's trying to take my money. I need your app. Help me get the word out that she's a racist. She used nigger behind closed doors. She's trying to get my money. Oh. Well, she one of the realest bitches in the game. Fuck the haters. That's what we gonna do. She the realest. Y'all just, you just hating. Fuck the haters. You better not bring your ass over here trying to get us to cape for you, nigga. Don't you even try it. Oh, don't you dare try it, dude. Oh, when when they cape for racism until it hits them and all of a sudden, oh, first of all, oh, Black Lives Matter, nigga. Uh, look, Tyreek, they, they be calling me up. Yeah, first, y'all yo, yo, xenophobic niggas, leave Joe Rogan alone. You niggas always talk about white supremacy. Pleh, ain't no white supremacy, nigga. Shut up and give. Stop being lazy. And then the white woman want to take all your money. <laughs> Hello, Tariq and Tariq. Uh, I, uh, they, they show up to your house. Hey, Tariq. Um, first of all, I, I want you to sign my FBA flag. I got an FBA flag. I'm, I'm not an FBA nigga, but I identify with your struggle and I bought a flag for support. I support FBA. You have a, he have two flags over here. FBA, FBA earrings on. Hold on. That nigga have, let me get a new fresh. <laughs> that nigga, hold on, I can't get my FBA bag on. That nigga gonna have the FBA earrings on. Hold on. <laughs> He's gonna have two flags on. Eh, 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 Tariq. Eh, Tariq. Hey, nigga, I, I need, first of all, I love eating collars. I love eating collars, Tariq. I love it. Oh, second, can you help me get the word out about a white woman that I was dating who's trying to get my money? She's trying to get my money. We're all in this together, nigga. Tariq! Don't you come with your flag now, nigga. Don't bring your ass over here now. Oh, you were caping for, for the white community, nigga. Hold your own nuts. No. I don't want to hear no sad story. Now the white woman trying to clean your little old ass your ass out. Now you want some sympathy. No. No, no, no. See? You got to pay your insurance premiums before the accident, see? Y'all wait till you crash to try to get some insurance payments. No, it don't work like that, see? No, no, no. You got to pay them premiums, and you ain't been paying your premiums. You know? Oh, I don't want to hear nothing about no damn racism from you. All right? Speaking of racism, there's, there's a new white woman out here. Not white woman. There's a new Asian woman out here doing the whole black scent. That, uh, you know, there was an Asian woman, that Aquafina woman who was doing the black scent for a long time. So now there's this woman here. This woman here who's up in New York, who's running around with a black scent and people are calling her out. And yeah, I, I don't rock with these black scents. She's up there in New York and uh, here she go. Hold on. What is this 
mad controversy about my voice and what the fuck I said. Bitch, let me tell you something. This is the last time I'm gonna fucking say this shit. My voice is how the fuck I fucking sound. I'm not gonna fake some shit for 19 fucking years. That don't make no fucking sense. Bitch, if I grew up around the fucking hood, if I grew up in the projects, I'm gonna speak how the people around me speak. If I go to school with people who speak like this, I'm gonna speak how I speak. That's not how, that's not faking or nothing like that. You a part of your environment. Y'all bitches should know that shit. And bitch, if I live in China, I damn well be speaking mad Chinese. Like, come on, this, this is fucking science, bro. Like, not even science, this is ABC, motherfucker. Like, come on. You telling me I shouldn't be speaking like this, so how should I speak like? You tell me how I should speak like, and that's not being stereotypical. Because I'm Asian, because I look Asian, I should speak a certain way. That's not being racist. In you know who she sound like. She sound like the female China Mac. Don't she sound like, she sound like the female China Mac. Yeah, it, it, I know it sound like a voiceover. Ma'am, stop. No, ma'am, no, we ain't buying it. You don't talk like that around your family. I ain't, no, that, you're performing. I ain't with that, no. When I hear these non-black people with all of that, run for the hills. Yeah, she sounds like China Mac, and that ain't how you talk. Hold on. Yeah, I ain't impressed. Not impressed. Hold on. Itself. That don't make no sense. And on topic of me saying that word, nah, that was all on me. That shit was there on me. Don't mean nowhere. Don't mean if I grew up around people who said it. Don't mean who, who referred to me who said it, who, which they did. That's my fault for thinking I was okay for me to say it. That was not, that's not it. Because at the end of the day, I'm not black. That was disrespectful to the African American community and I should never be saying that shit. I issued an apology and I meant that shit. I'ma learn from it and I'ma never ever say that shit again because that shit's not cool. But even though I meant that shit in no offensive way, no disrespect, that's something I should not be saying as an Asian American. That I get. You can ask those around me who moved for dummy fucking long and the people who I went to fucking school with, they know. That's how I've been sounding since day fucking one. And you don't like this shit, you don't gotta hear. You can unfollow. That's cool with me. Bitch, you can leave. Fuck. What you're not finna do is sit here and tell me that my voice is fake. And I'm trying to profit off of this shit. Bitch, that make no that make no sense. Yeah, that, it, it is. That, that's not how you talk, sweetie. None of y'all talk like that. Y'all you know, get around your people. Y'all get around your family, you, you switch your voice up. And also, I, I didn't seen this for years, y'all get around the police and y'all get in them interrogation rooms. All of a sudden, you know how to speak um, uh, the king's English. You know how to speak proper all of a sudden. Yeah, I, I don't buy that. Yeah, I'm never impressed with that, with those hood black scents. Because tr and truth be told, truth be told, let me tell you why I don't rock with that when, when I see non-black people talking like that. Because truth be told, if a black woman was around me talking like that, I'm like, uh-oh. Because most black women don't talk like that. Let me keep it a bean. See, what they do, these folks get around black folks and then they find the grimiest, most low-level nigga to imitate. Most black women don't talk like that. All right, let's get that bullshit straight. I hate that that becomes the default dialect of black women. Most black women don't talk, yeah, 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 some of these other fakers and frauds on online who do all of that extra black scent, motherfucker, jai, turkey, you, you know, some of these bad built weenies. But most black women don't talk like that. You dig? Most black women do not talk like that. And if one does, if a sister's talking like that, I'm looking at her funny style. I'm looking like, who is this ratchet? I don't want to be around no ratchet talking like that. There's nothing constructive going to talk, going to come out of that. Yeah, the Sukihanas and yeah, 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 yeah. What's what's constructive coming from that? I don't want to be around no sister who talks like that, let alone some damn non-black person. Say so Brooklyn got some women like that. Yeah, you do have some hood rats out there like that. But I know a lot of women from Brooklyn, they walk around, yo, this shit is mad crazy, son. Yo, yo, fuck all that. Yo, you mad dumb talking like, yeah, this my voice, man. Most women sisters don't talk like that. Yeah, you might find a super hood, ratchet, weed head chick who talks like that. But stop it. Stop that. Yeah. Yeah, hood rats talk like that. Straight up and down hood rats, which is not the default version of a black woman. 
Yeah? That's not the default version of a black woman. Every other word, motherfucker, jive, turkey, mother... Uh, that's cosplaying. When well, you watch people who talk like that. Yeah? And usually, people who do talk like that in New York, let me tell you something. So You said Cardi B and all of these people. Notice it's people who are non-FBA who put on an accent trying to talk like the lowest level foundation of black American. Usually, it's somebody who's non-FBA who tries to sound overly hood by imitating the dialect of the most ratchet Negro they can find. Yeah? <clears throat> Which further proves my point. Most FBA people don't talk like that. They just don't. Yeah? We ain't talking like that. So I'm not impressed with that being the default. We make a person talking dumb equivalent to talking black. We make black talk and dumb talk synonymous. No. No. We're not going to make that the default dialect. You know? Just like that, catch me outside. Catch me outside, how about that? You know, you acting black is acting dumb. No. And we got to stop accepting people coming around us talking and acting dumb as a way to seem down. No. No. Yeah. This is why we're having a cultural revolution right now. We're having a cultural revolution. And we're saying no more. And speaking of New York, there was a, um, a situation where this Karen was trying to steal this um, black guy's bike. You know those in New York and in big cities, they have the city bikes where you can, um, you know, you use your credit card or your iPhone to get a bike from these um, stands and you can ride your bike around the city and... You turn your bike back into another one of these city bike stands. They got them all over the country. And this brother got a bike. He paid for a bike. And this Karen tried to steal his bike. And she went through all the Karen motions with this brother. The I'm white and I say so. The fake crying. Yeah, this is the, the ripple effect of the white supremacist being able to kill a random black person and then being supported. See, we this is why this case with Daniel Penny is very important. See, we got to nip this stuff in the bud before it sends a message, before it becomes normalized to just kind of run up on a black person with the BS. So this woman is trying to get these black youths hemmed up. And from what I understand, this woman works at Bellevue. I think they've identified, we've identified her in the chat. That's a Bellevue uniform. So... Look at all the Karen um, tactics she tried to use. Peep this out. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 so she's screaming help and then took this brother's phone they said her name is what Sla Slavlana Fontaine yeah she has that Serbian look, some kind of Eastern European look. Huh. I'm not touching you. Stop. No, stop. No, no, no. No, no, no. Sit down. Please help. Please You're not crying. You're not crying. I got stupid. I got your video. Where you 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 put it out? Hassan, you put it out. Hassan, you put it out. Hassan, you put it out. This is my bike, it's on my account. Please move. All right, so why don't we set reset the bike? I'm not resetting the bike. It's his. It's his. It's his. Oh, it's his. 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 Guys, stop fake crying. Stop touching me. I'm not touching you. Hold up, hold up. Hey, stop touching me. Stop touching me. Stop touching me. Stop touching me. 
Take it. Exactly. So take it. So take it. Oh, baby, you're gonna come out with wait, 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 how you stop crying? Not a, not a tear came down, miss. Not a tear came down. So yeah, she immediately stopped the fake crying. Yeah, they, they got her name in here. So this is what these people are doing. She knew exactly what she was doing. She basically tried to just take this brother's bike. He paid for a bike and she just tried to take it. Say she's Ukrainian. Oh, yeah. So she tried to take that brother's bike and then tried to get them brothers hemmed up by fake crying and yelling help so that somebody can come and do something to them brothers. Yeah? So we have to shut stuff like that down. That stuff has to be shut down, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah? It is a crime, but they're not enforcing it. They don't enforce these crimes when it comes to us. You see? So where's the RICO charges? Yeah, because you remember Biden was up there at Howard University talking about what he's done with calling out white supremacy. And at the same time, Biden was up there talking about some white supremacy. There was a white supremacist group, Patriot Front, marching around D.C. The white supremacist group, Patriot Front, was marching around D.C. Biden didn't do anything. Biden don't put no RICO charges on these white supremacist groups. Some of these white supremacist groups were the same ones who ran up there on, on January 6th in the Capitol building, none of these people got no RICO charges on them. And these are white supremacists who are clicked in with all of these groups and organizations. They're not putting RICO charges on these guys. Yeah? So yeah, don't let these people run that game on us about saying something about white supremacy, but they don't do anything about white supremacy. Yeah? This is why we got to be codified. We got to be hella on code, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lot of folks in here. But listen, family, get your tickets for the FBA Expo and get your flags. People are loving these flags, man. Go to officialfba.com to get your flag. Go to officialfba.com to get your flag, ladies and gentlemen. And we have the XB, FBA Expo going down in Dallas. We got so these are just some of the phenomenal speakers we have. King Cam, Reza Islam, Vicky Dillard, Ben X, Red Pill, Blue Pill, Erica Lachey, the Hootie Mayad Ra, um, Brother Kaba, Professor Honey, Greg Marcel Dixon, and many, many, many more musical guests. We have Kiki Wire performing, um, the legendary Mr. Eric Bonet performing. It's going to be a phenomenal event at the FBA Expo in Dallas. Get your tickets at F fbaexpo.com fbaexpo.com if you are a vendor if you got a black business come on down there and get your vending space showcase your business we got thousands of people who are going to be down there we got very very reasonable vending prices to come on down and showcase who you are i remember the last conference we had in atlanta the vendors were selling out of their stuff so quickly, just making money hand over fist. People were just excited to see quality black products, quality black businesses, man. Let the people know who you are. I still um, deal with a lot of these black businesses that we were um, working with back in 2020. And it's good for us to know who we are, who's who. This is a networking thing where we get to see our businesses out here. I love doing business with black folks. I really love doing it. I love seeing black folks do business. I love doing business with y'all. Man, when I see black folks who got a business going, I'm first in line to see what you got. Yeah? So y'all need to be down there. I'm talking especially to the black business owners. Y'all need to come on down. Yeah? But yeah, it's going to be fly. The, the point, everything is going to be nice out there, man. It's going to be a nice, nice family event. Y'all need to come on down. I want to see your face in the place, ladies and gentlemen. And also, family, look, go to the Hidden History Museum website, man. We really need the family to make monthly um, recurring contributions to the museum to keep everything afloat, ladies and gentlemen, because that's very, very, very important museums are kept afloat by the contributions from the community 
that these museums are serving. You got to understand that. So we really, really need the community to, and just and we just need a, a whole bunch of people doing a little, not just one or two people doing a lot. We got enough people. It just takes a whole bunch of people doing a little, and that little helps out a lot. Everybody in here, we got 5,000 people in here, man. If everybody in here can give at least 20 bucks a month, a recurring contribution to the museum, and you can go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, that will help everything stay afloat. You dig? That's the, the, the bare minimum. Most of these museums that you see, they get millions of dollars every year, sometimes a month. The Getty, the, they get millions and millions of dollars. We're asking folks, man, throw, throw a 20 a month. A little something, something. You think? So we can keep this thing going. When we have institutions that that's for us and by us, it's imperative that we have the community um, look out for these institutions. You think? Because we're doing things for a lot of kids out here. The people are bringing their kids here. And we say we want stuff to show our children, but we, we have to have the community support that stuff. And we're talking about just a little bit. So that's very important, family. You then? But anyway, man, let me get up out of here. Go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. And um, look, FBA Expo coming to Dallas, man. Y'all need to come on through. Get your tickets, FBAExpo.com. I would like to meet you guys and chop it up with you guys. And um, you guys have a great week. Um, the, the new mini documentary, Tariq Nasheed's Museum Life, Speaking of the museum, people want, they've been wanting to see some stuff, some, some stuff that we filmed around the museum. We got that for you. If you're on FBA stream, you're going to possibly, probably have something tomorrow. It might be posted by tomorrow. I keep you guys posted. All right? But anyway, man, y'all have a great evening. Puppy Akuta and Lola Vuve to the